This October, the Biden administration delivered the biggest blow yet in the U.S.-China confrontation over technology. The Commerce Department issued extensive new export controls that largely cut off China from the advanced semiconductors you need for artificial intelligence and supercomputing. This has been a somewhat controversial move. Almost everyone agrees that this will do major damage to China's technology industry today. But some analysts argue that in the long run, cutting off China from access to U.S. technology will actually accelerate the process at which it develops these technologies itself. China has long relied on the U.S. and a handful of other countries for access to advanced semiconductors. China can make some more primitive chips on its own, and its government has invested a lot in trying to build up its own domestic semiconductor industry. But semiconductors are some of the most complex items on Earth, and making them requires access to advanced equipment and deep industry know-how that is all bottled up in a few companies in a handful of different places. The U.S., Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and the Netherlands. Over the past four years, the U.S. government has steadily weaponized that reliance. It began by cutting off Chinese telecom giant Huawei from access to advanced U.S. chips. It then expanded those controls to cover more Chinese companies involved in the military or the surveillance industries. It also convinced the Netherlands to stop selling China the equipment needed to manufacture the most cutting-edge chips. But these restrictions were still somewhat limited. The majority of Chinese companies could still buy U.S. chips, and they kept doing that. Earlier this month, all that changed. The Commerce Department's new rules added three major restrictions. First, it stopped targeting individual Chinese companies and started targeting the country as a whole. Now, selling any advanced chips to any company in China will require a license, and Commerce has said it's going to be denying most of those requests. Second, it prevented any U.S. citizen, resident, or U.S. company from working with any Chinese company trying to manufacture advanced chips. Third, it went even deeper into the semiconductor supply chain by restricting the components that go into the semiconductor manufacturing equipment. Before, it was just restricting the chips and the tools that make the chips. Now it's restricting the chips, the tools that make the chips, and the components that go into the tools that make the chips. In the near term, this has been absolutely devastating for China's tech industry leaving its AI companies and its supercomputing centers high and dry in need of chips. But what will this mean in the long run? That's where things get tricky and highly uncertain. Some technology analysts thought that the status quo was actually working okay for America. The U.S. continued to sell finished chips to most Chinese companies, and it restricted the sale of some semiconductor manufacturing equipment to China's own fabrication facilities, its fabs. For a chip fab to make progress quickly, it needs access to the best equipment, and it also needs to be working with the best chip design and equipment provider companies. Improving is a co-engineering process, and that requires the designer, the fab, and the equipment provider to all be collaborating. But as long as Chinese companies could still purchase and fabricate chips outside of the country, they chose to do that, and that likely slowed down China's process in upgrading its own capabilities. With the new restrictions, the U.S. government has put a stop to that. It has done a lot of damage by cutting off all these players from access to U.S. technology, but it's also forcing them to work together for the first time. How this plays out is anybody's guess. It's possible that these restrictions do so much damage to China's semiconductor industry that China won't catch up for at least 15 or maybe even 20 years. Or it's possible that the restrictions do a lot of damage today but they also accelerate the pace at which China develops its own self-sustaining semiconductor industry. Countries like Japan and the Netherlands are now heavily incentivized to get U.S. technology out of their own equipment so that they are no longer subject to U.S. export controls. And Chinese semiconductor companies now have no option except to collaborate with each other. That'll be a tough task because right now they lack the equipment and the engineering know-how to make real progress. But China has continually surprised us with the pace of its advances in other core technologies. So stay tuned.